Poster number six, a systematic review of anatomic leakage associated risk factors following laparoscopic anterior resection being presented by Shayan Arshed. Hi. Hello all, uh, good afternoon to everyone and thank you to Sages for this opportunity. Um, so I'm Cheyenne Arshad. I work at Medway Maritime Hospital as a surgical <coughs> senior, ho senior house officer at Medway Maritime Hospital in Kent in the UK. I did my master's at Bart's Cancer Institute uh, with Queen Mary University of London, and this is my dissertation project. So there's nothing to disclose. So laparoscopic anterior resections, as you all understand, is a very standard procedure where we remove a portion of the rectum, including the sigmoid or not. Um, laparoscopically. So anastomotic leakage is a very dire complication which if not caught in time can be, can be life-threatening. Um, so the risk factors, uh, as far as the background goes, there's uh, the risk factors on uh, leakage is very limited. There's limited literature and it's on, mostly on open procedures and not laparoscopic. So due to this uh, lack of literature, I decided to do a systematic review on this, uh, on this uh, topic, so. And the risk factors for laparoscopic are not, uh, there's no such consensus on the specific risk factors. There's no decided list that exists. So the aims of the study were to identify and evaluate the risk factors leading to anastomotic leakage after laparoscopic anterior resections and compare it to the current literature. And the secondary uh, aim automatically became to determine the overall incidence of leakage after laparoscopic anterior resections. So the methodology used, the PICOS model used was the population was the patients undergoing laparoscopic anterior resections, mostly for, well, all of them were for rectal cancer. Um, the intervention was laparoscopic anterior resections with anastomosis, either including or not including a protective stoma. Patients with risk factors were compared to patients without them. The outcome was anastomotic leak with symptoms confirmed radiologically or by reoperation. Studies included were all experimental and observation studies except single case studies. Databases used were Medline, which is PubMed, Embase, Web of Knowledge, Cochrane. Mm. The keywords used were uh, anastomotic leak or leakage, laparoscope with a truncation or laparoscopic, colorectal surgery or anterior section, and the Boolean operators and were used accordingly. Strict inclusion and exclusion criteria were applied. Um, I'll just mention some of them right now. So in th the time period for the study was inception to May 2014. Um, only published literature and only English. Exclusion criteria were open procedures and open and laparoscopic where the data for just laparoscopic was inextractable. So this is the PRISMA chart um, showing uh, 11 papers that was finally included for qualitative synthesis. So basically this is a descriptive review. So in my results, uh, in our results, sorry, uh, total patients who underwent laparoscopic anterior resection were 3,299, 6.9% leakage. <clears throat> we studied about 20 risk factors overall, and we identified 12 of them which showed higher incidence of leakage, which were male gender at 8.8, .8, ASA class of three at nine, um, advanced tumor stage with TNM three or more at 7.6, large tumor size of four centimeter or more, 8.7%, lower tumor location, less than uh, 10 centimeter or, or lower at, from the anal verge, uh, multiple stapler firings, which is three or more, five centimeter or less level of anastomosis from the anal verge, longer operative times, um, administration of neoadjuvant chemo, chemo radiation, uh, blood transfusions, conversion to open, and interestingly, splenic flexure mobilization. Now, splenic flexure mobilization, this might be due to the lack of number of patients in which the splenic flexure was not mobilized, and also lack of studies reporting on it. So the limitation, uh, also on the other hand, um, uh, factors which showed low incidence were creation of protective stoma, and uh, uh, patients uh, who were operated in the second half of the study time period, which might be due to the surgeon's learning curve. Limitations of this study were um, lack of statistical analysis, meta-analysis were not done, um, and majorly the parameters for, for example, for large tumor size or tumor location or uh, uh, operative times or level of anastomosis were not 
similar in all of the cities. They were different from all uh, with each other, so we had to summarize them. So there was some loss of data there. So future recommendations are um, r randomized controlled trials for appropriate risk factors and further observation studies for laparoscopic interior sections and identifying risk factors and coming up with a list so that surgeons can create protective stomas as need be. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Not so much a question as a comment. Um, I just congratulate you on the methodology that you used. For those of you who haven't done um, a, a review, a meta-analysis type of review, the rigor that he demonstrated in doing this using the multiple databases, defining before and in advance what your search terms were going to be, restricting your groups, is very labor-intensive, time-intensive. And, uh, but it does improve the quality of what you do. So I congratulate you on your, your um, methodology. Thank you so much. I have my thesis if you'd like to read my methodology, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I can leave it with you. I can pick it up later. Okay, thank, thank you. you.